The Noctua NH-L9X65 is the better and newer version of the NH-L9 low-profile CPU cooler. This model can be acquired for around 40 US dollars or euros at the moment of this review. The NH-L9X65 is small, as in very small, almost as short as the standard Intel cooler and smaller than a regular sized DSLR lens. The NH-L9X65 has a weight of 413 grams with the fan installed and a height of just 65 millimeters. The cooler uses a single 92 millimeter fan, the NF-A9X14 PWM model. This fan has a thickness of just 14 millimeters and thus helps out with the low height of the CPU cooler. This fan is also fully PWM compatible and has a maximum speed of 2200 RPM and a minimum speed of just 500 RPM. Obviously, there are more features included with this fan, including the Noctua SSO2 bearing system and rubber pads on the corners, just to name a few of them. The heat transfer is done through four heat pipes, all made from nickel plated copper with an outer diameter of just 6 mm. These heat pipes are looped around the heatsink to provide the best heat dissipation possible within the small surface area of the heatsink. The endings of the heat pipes are rounded off and are symmetrical in shape. This is worth mentioning as many coolers have their heat pipes endings unfinished and left with different shapes. Speaking of the cooling surface, the heatsink uses a total of 49 aluminum made fins, which are stacked on the lower and upper side of the heatsink. These fins have their edges shaped to not only provide a place for the metallic fan clips to attach to, but also to allow for the screwdriver to access the mounting spring-loaded screws found pre-installed at the bottom of the heatsink. The base of the cooler is made from the same nickel plated copper as the four heat pipes. The surface of the base plate is smooth and has subtle circular marks left from the manufacturing process. These marks will not affect the way the thermal compound will be spread across the CPU surface or the performance, but it will make the cleaning of the thermal compound from the base plate of the cooler just a tiny bit trickier. The method used by Noctua to connect the base plate of the cooler with the heat pipes is by soldering the two components together and thus achieving the best possible heat transfer method. In terms of accessories, you get plenty with this little cooler. First of all, all the accessories are correctly labeled on the front side of the accessory box. And you have the user manual, which is printed in different languages. Then you have the metallic backplate, a tube of Noctua NTH1 thermal compound, a metallic Phillips screwdriver, a Noctua metallic case badge, and a low noise speed adapter to lower the speed of the fan. Obviously, you also get screws, bolts, spacers, and mounting bars, but those are part of the mounting system, and we have no time to mention everything, as those are pretty much the same across most of Noctua's range. And here is the NH-L9X65 installed on a full ATX modern motherboard and you get to see the amount of space that you gain with this small cooler, not only on the size but in terms of height as well. There is plenty of space on the underside of the CPU cooler and thus you gain easy access to both the graphics card and the top mounted M.2 socket found often below the CPU socket. Then on the sides, well, there is no space taken by the heatsink, so there is plenty of air moving over the VRM area of the motherboard, and also you can easily access all four RAM slots on the right side. As per usual, before we get into the testing of the cooler, here is a noise sample of the cooler and its fan, going from 0 RPM to its maximum speed of 2200 RPM. I am doing this to provide the most accurate result for sound, because a basic decibel reading will not reveal other types of unwanted noises, such as bearing or vibrations noises. The cooler reached a maximum noise reading of 36 decibels measured at a distance of 10 cm away from the system and CPU cooler. Thanks to the way Noctua designs their fans and the SSO2 bearing system, there are no unwanted noises to be heard with this cooler. The only noise heard is that of air being pushed through the aluminum fins of the heatsink. While this small CPU cooler is rated for usage with CPUs that do not exceed 84 watts of TDP or thermal design power, I decided to test it using an Intel i9-9900K CPU because someone has to do it and it was going to be me. Also please note that all CPU coolers are tested with all the fans running at their maximum rated speeds. 
The first test involves the benchmark Intel Burn Test V2, which heats up the CPU in a similar way as many modern AAA video games. This way, we get to see an easy to replicate scenario for all CPU coolers. And in this test, the NH-L9X65 reached a maximum temperature of 92 degrees Celsius with the i9-9900K CPU overclocked manually to 5 GHz. However, the temperature with the CPU running at its factory settings and frequency reached around 85 degrees Celsius. The second test involves the stability test found within the AIDA64 Extreme software. This type of CPU load is not encountered in your daily usage, as no game can put this amount of pressure on a CPU. However, this benchmark is only done to push each CPU cooler to the limit. And in this test, the NH-L9X65 reached a maximum temperature of 102 degrees Celsius while having the CPU overclocked. And a temperature of 90 degrees Celsius was reached with the CPU running at its factory settings. Obviously, this cooler is not meant to work with such a high TDP CPU and also with an overclock CPU. The Noctua NH-L9X65 is a good little CPU cooler that has a simple purpose to cool a lower TDP CPU while also being reasonably quiet. One of the advantages of this CPU cooler is the size and the clearance it offers once installed over the CPU. This makes this cooler a good option for a low-power gaming small 4-factor system. The installation process is very simple and easy to understand as the Noctua mounting system has been refined with each revision. The performance is what we can expect for a heatsink of this size with a fan of this power and size, so there is no surprise that a higher TDP CPU was not able to be kept cool by this little CPU cooler. In addition, overclocking while using this CPU cooler is out of the question, not unless you want to have some CPU throttling happening while gaming. What this CPU cooler is for, as I've previously said, is a small form factor gaming system that uses a lower or an average TDP CPU. If you like this review, then perhaps you can consider subscribing for more and if you want to support this channel directly, then in the description below you will find listed both the subscriber star and Patreon pages.